Hey guys, so Mother's Day is coming up next month and I thought we would do something extra special for the occasion. So I'm gonna show you how to make some delicious lemon thyme sugar cookies. And then my friend Robert Mahar, who many of you might remember from Kin Community, is coming to show us how to package them up in a cute little DIY cookie package. I'm so excited for this. I love Robert, he's such a talent. And if you aren't familiar with him and his work, I'll leave you a link in the description to his website where you can get caught up. So first I'm gonna show you how to make the cookies and then Robert is gonna join us in a minute. So the first thing we're gonna do is take one cup of room temperature butter and beat that together with one cup of sugar. I find for sugar cookies like this, that is the perfect ratio. One cup of butter to one cup of sugar. You cannot go wrong. And then once your butter mixture is nice and fluffy, you're going to add one egg. And then for a little bit of texture, I also like to add the zest of one small lemon. So over the years I've found when you bake with lemon zest, it sort of bakes off all the flavor. I find that lemon zest is really great for things that you're serving fresh. So that's why I use both the zest and the extract because with the zest, you get to see the little specks of lemon and people get a hint of what's to come. And then the extract kind of gives you all the flavor. So I do like to use both. And then we're also gonna add two teaspoons of freshly minced thyme. So this time of year, I grow a lot of lemon thyme in my garden, and that's the variety that has that beautiful variegated leaf to it, so it's a little bit yellow and a little bit green. It has the most incredible flavor to it. But if you don't grow lemon thyme, not to worry, you can use regular thyme. I like to add herbs in my baking because I think it's really unexpected and just looks so beautiful too, especially for something like Mother's Day. Then you can set that aside and put together your dry ingredients. We're going to whisk together three cups of all-purpose flour, three quarters teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. You can whisk that all together and then add that just in thirds to your butter mixture. And you wanna beat this really well until the dough really starts to form into like small little balls. That way you know that that butter and the flour are really well incorporated. Then you're gonna turn it out onto a floured surface, roll it into maybe three balls, flatten them into discs, and then wrap them up in some parchment paper. Now, because these are cut cookies, you do wanna refrigerate this dough for at least two hours. Overnight is even better. That way you'll get a really clean cut and a really beautiful shaped cookie. And then you're gonna cut out your cookies and place them on a cookie sheet that's been lined with parchment paper. And then the final step is just to take some raw cane sugar and sprinkle them on top. You could use cane sugar, you could use turbinado sugar. I like those heavier sugars because I find you'll get a really nice decorative effect with it. If you just use plain sugar, it ends up kind of melting into the cookie and you don't kind of see it or feel it as much. Then we're gonna bake our cookies at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for just about 12 to 13 minutes. Now the secret with these cookies is really to take them out just when they're fully baked through but they don't start to turn golden brown. That's where they're the most beautiful and I think the most buttery. And then once they're done, you can place your cookies on a cake stand or turn them into kind of a nice little escargot pattern in a shallow bowl and then place some fresh thyme in the center. Or if you want to package these up to give us a gift, luckily Robert is here to show us how to do it. Robert, thank you so much for coming. I'm so excited. I'm so <laughs> happy to be here with you in your beautiful kitchen. Thanks for having me. Oh, you bet. And now this is what we're making, this beautiful it is. package. I mean, your cookies look delicious. They smell so good <laughs> and I think a special cookie needs uh, some special packaging, especially when you're going to be giving it to your mom on Mother's Day. And there's nobody better for the special packaging than this guy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, one of the things that I really love about this packaging that we're going to create together today is the simple materials. We're going to be using some really um, inexpensive wood rounds that you can find at your local craft and hobby supply store. Mm -hmm. They're in the woodworking aisle. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be using um, single-sided corrugated cardboard. Now, typically when you think about corrugated cardboard, you think about the rigid pieces where the corrugation is sort of sandwiched in between yeah. two pieces, makes it nice and, and stiff. But if you have this single-sided, you get this really flexible mm -hmm. material with this beautiful ridge surface. So, that's what we're gonna create for the exterior of our packaging. Right. Yes. All right. So we're gonna start actually by prepping our uh, wood rounds. Now, when you get these from the craft supply store, they are pretty smooth, but it never hurts to take a little bit of fine grit sandpaper and just kind of ease the edges a little bit. Okay. So if you just kind of do a quick around the edges, and it's likely that you had to remove a price tag from one side. So once you do that, if you give it a light sanding, it just kind of removes any of the residue that might be left over on there. Yes, great. So we just do it quickly on yes. both sides. 
Now this is easy, right, Robert? This is super <laughs> simple. It really is simple. If you can sand and glue, you're gonna be good to you're go. You're good, because I love to cook, and I like to be very detailed when I cook, but I'm not a real crafter. I, well, I'm insecure with my crafting. Oh, well you should be, and hopefully by the end of this, you'll feel pretty confident on putting these together. <laughs> well, you're such a good teacher. Thank so you. I feel very, you know, very at home with That's your instruction. really kind, thank you. <laughs> So one thing to keep in mind with these wood rounds is you wanna make sure that they're large enough to accommodate the cookie size that you're creating. You can see they create the little end caps, so they control the diameter of our packaging. Beth used this really lovely sort of uh, scalloped edge cookie cutter, and when you hold it up against the wood, you see that it's gonna fit perfectly inside of there. So good. we're good to go. Yes, good to double check before yes. you set out. Yes, okay. So once you have sanded your wood rounds, we can set those aside, mm -hmm. and we're gonna move on to our corrugated card Board. I have cut a piece of the corrugated cardboard for us each that is 13 by 8 inches. Perfect. Now the 8 inches is because that's how wide we want our container to be. And you want to note that the corrugated side is going to be on the outside and the smooth part is going to be on the inside. Got it. So there are a couple of things that we want to do before we start gluing onto our wood rounds. And one is to create a little closure flap for one end that looks a little bit like an envelope closure. Mm -hmm. The way we're going to do that is we're going to take our ruler and we're going to measure the midway point on the short end. Mm -hmm. So these are eight inches long. We are going to make a little pencil mark right at the four inch mark. Okay, sounds easy enough. And then on the two sides, measure down an inch and a half from the end. This is about as complicated as the math for this project <laughs> right. will get, so not to worry. Okay, inch and a half, is that what you inch said? Inch and a half okay. on either on side. On either side, okay, yeah. gotcha. Now, once you have done that, you're gonna take one of your wood rounds and you're gonna center it right up against that center mark. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna lightly trace that end. You're just gonna kind of get a little curved mark there. All right, oh, just a little curve, not the yeah. whole circle. You don't need to do okay. the whole circle. There we go, got it. And then we'll take our rulers and we're gonna draw a straight line from that inch and a half mark just to the edge of that curved line. Got it. This way that point on sort of the envelope flap is going to have a beautiful curve right yes. on the end. Oh, I love oh, right. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. you see what I'm doing? Yeah, so that? I have to do it from the curve. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Yo, Robert, where do you get all these ideas? These are all so clever. Thank I you. love where you come up with these things. Well, you know what? I'm always looking for projects that look good, but honestly, the effort that you have to put into them is often minimal and the materials are really accessible. Yeah. That's why I love something like this. We're working with cardboard and it's going to be lovely when we're done it with it. It is. And you know, as a mom, I love to get things that are homemade. I think those are the best gifts. They ever. are. And, and you keep gonna, them. <laughs> and you're going to hang on to this because it's reusable. Oh, that's so, great. Okay. Bonus. There you go. All that right. Looks is that good? Perfect. Okay. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to take our scissors and we're just going to cut that out. Oh my gosh, look at these fancy scissors. Got a little lock. Oh, I love on that. There. Oh, these yeah. are great. Okay. And you probably want something sturdy to cut through cardboard. Is that why you like this? Well, you know what? This is actually thin enough because it's the single sided corrugated that most sharp crafting scissors would work. You don't need work the fancy perfectly. scissors. Okay. And so what you see there is just that nice little rounded edge okay. so that when this curls around, it's going to close over ah, the top just like a little long. Look at that. Yeah. Okay. Now, one more thing. That's what? perfect, yes. Beth. Oh my gosh, Looks look really at this. Good. I'm See? so impressed with myself. You're a pro. <laughs> okay. <laughs> one more thing before we start gluing yes. is we're gonna take our ruler and our pencil one more time, mm -hmm. and on the end opposite of your flap, we're gonna measure seven inches from the bottom and just lightly make a pencil mark on either side. Okay, seven inches. Now, the reason we're doing this is this is kind of our guideline for our glue. We're gonna put glue along these ah, ends. Yes. And I learned this from a little bit of trial and error because the first couple that I glued around the wood ends, I glued a little bit too much and didn't leave enough room for the cookies. Oh so, yes, got it, we gotta leave room for the That leave. being the sole purpose of this project, <laughs> we wanna make sure those cookies get in there. Okay, so now we have our markings. Right, so we've got our lovely sort of envelope enclosure mm -hmm. end. We've got our glue line markings, and now we're gonna move on to the hot glue. Okay. How do you feel about hot glue guns, Beth? Are you <laughs> well, all right? Well, if it's a straight line, I'm good. <laughs> we are doing straight lines. Okay. So I'm just using um, a miniature glue gun. It's mm -hmm. a low temp one. Sometimes mm -hmm. when you're working with hot glue, you've got options of a high temp or low temp. Oh. Low mm -hmm. temp sometimes is a little bit easier to control when yeah. you're making a line. Good so, for beginners. Exactly. Like yeah. So what we're gonna do 
is we're going to start down in this corner mm -hmm. and we're going to do a line of glue right along the edge that's about two inches long. Okay. So I'm going to watch you first. Yep. <laughs> Make sure I do so it. So it's just a nice little thin line. Oh, just a thin, yeah, I usually real keep thin. a okay. piece of cardboard on the side to rest my hot glue gun on. Which I think is a great idea, yeah. yeah. Now, you have to work a little bit quickly with the hot glue and I'm just going to stick the edge of this wood round as close to the edge of the cardboard as possible. Roll the cardboard up along it and then just hold it in place for mm, just with the glue. a second. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I want to roll, it's like a little wagon wheel. Yep, exactly. Okay. And then just hold it in place oh with God. your fingers for just a second. Again, I have a little yeah. flap. There but we go. But you know go. what? That's totally That's good. fine. Yeah, we can just it's move totally it. It's totally fine. There we go. Okay. And I always say with any project, your first one, it's like the first pancake. I know. You know, it doesn't Not always good. work out perfect, but that's why we, you know, you yeah. do a couple of these. That's how you these. learn, exactly. exactly. So now I'm going to go to the second side, mm -hmm. and I'm going to, again, add just about a two inch line of the glue. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't worked with glue guns before, you kind of get used to, um, you'll figure out the right amount of pressure yeah, to apply you... to the trigger. <laughs> You've got Seriously. that down. Yeah, because <laughs> our inclination is to push really hard, but then you end up with a lot of it. It's sort yeah. of like working with an uh, icing bag exactly. or something, you know? Yep, yeah. you do get the hang of it exactly. after practice. Okay, and then we're doing the same exact thing on the, the other side? The exact same thing. All right. So you can see now we've got it started on either side. This guy's leaning in a little bit, and I'm going to kind of correct that as I glue it up. Mm -hmm. so, oh, this is so much easier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> really? Not difficult at all. <laughs> Not at all. So I'm just going to continue now working my way up. Okay. Again, just adding another, you know, two, two and a half inches of the hot glue. Mm -hmm. And then again, rolling it around, trying to keep the wood round as close to the edge of the cardboard as possible. Yeah, see what you mean here. Yeah. Okay, yep. Always sort of holding it in place for just a few seconds. What that does is it gives the glue just a second to um, cool down and it sets it up nice and secure. Got it. And again, remember that we're only gluing up to that little seven inch mark oh, that we created right. initially. That right. way it's going to leave an opening that's wide enough to um, include our cookies. Include the cookies. So can you guys see that? You see there are my pencil marks right here. I was about to keep going, but you're right. Now I see why yep. you do that. So at this point, we're looking pretty Look good. Look at us. This is great. And this is actually ready to fill. Amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Okay. Now, one thing I do like to do is cut down a little piece of baking parchment. It yeah. acts kind of as a barrier between the cardboard and the cookie. Yeah. Yeah. So you can cut that out, slip it right inside. And then, Beth, I'm going to actually ask for your assistance yes. in filling this up you with bet. me. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah, that works out well. Okay, and I'm just going to lean it up against Perfect. the wood, right? Yeah. So we're just going to splay them a little bit, which I think is a pretty way to display kind of the pattern of the cookie, so. Yeah, you get to see those nice scalloped edges. See yeah, how beautiful yeah. that looks? Oh, that's so great, Robert. I just I love, love it. That. That's so, so cute. So at this point then, you can kind of tuck your parchment paper mm -hmm. around it, roll your flap down, mm -hmm. and in order to secure this, we're just gonna use some simple ribbon. Okay, do you so, need me to hold it for you or? Yeah, okay. actually, that would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. So this is a, it's a one inch satin ribbon you can find at your craft supply store. I'm just gonna tie it right around the center, try and do a nice little bow. If you get a double-sided satin, you don't have to worry about which side faces uh, out, that's which a good makes idea. it a little bit yeah. easier. Now, Beth, we have put so much effort into making a beautiful presentation. We really need a lovely finishing touch, and that's gonna be a gift tag. So I'm gonna give that yes. to you. I actually have some fun news because over the last year and a half, I've been working with a company here in Los Angeles called Knock Knock developing a line of gift and stationery projects. I love that for you. What a great Thank idea. Thank you. And one of my favorites is this kit. It's a stamp and tag kit made just for you bakers. It comes with a rubber stamp, a little ink pad, 16 beautiful tags, and some twine to tie it onto your packaging. So really with this, the star of the show is the stamp. Uh, it says, I baked this gift. It is delicious, you love it, and agree it tastes far better than anything else money could buy. I couldn't agree more. Right? It's a little bit tongue-in-cheek. <laughs> I think it's hilarious, but then again, sometimes I think I'm hilarious, and hopefully <laughs> your mom hilarious. will too. <laughs> this is so cute. I love this. I think also because I have the worst handwriting when it comes with gift tags, and I love that it's all like neat and tidy, and it I didn't is. have to put the name. All you have to fill in is the to and the from. Looks so professional. Yeah. yeah. So we'll get it nice and inked up. 
You can, if you want, you can always practice on a piece of paper before you do it on your actual tag. Yeah. But we're going to go for it. We're going to, oh my gosh, you should go for it. <laughs> pressy press. And then lift it up. Okay, let's see. Excellent. Oh, amazing. You're How proud. about that? So all that's left now is for us to fill in the to and from. Oh, yes. So I'm just going to do this with a marker to mom from me. I like that. See? That's cute. So, and then with your twine on mm -hmm. the ends, you can just sort of tuck it right around your bow. Right. Big fan of double knotting just to make sure stuff doesn't fall apart. Yep. I think we are all ready I, for gift giving. I think we're all ready. This looks amazing. Now, wait, we also have some news about the kits. We're yes. going to be doing a little contest, right? Yes, or giveaway. we're going to do a little giveaway. Um, our friends at Knock Knock are going to be kind enough to sponsor this for us. So if you head over to their Facebook page, and we'll put a link in the video description below, leave a comment on the post. They're going to pick five commenters at random and send you your very own kit. Oh, I love that. That's so yeah. great. And if you don't want to wait for that and you want to buy it right away, I'll put a link in the description of where you can buy these online, as well as Robert's website. And you can learn more about Robert and, of course, the playlist from King Community of some of my favorite videos that you started. Thank you. <laughs> Thank my you. Favorite. <laughs> well, Beth, happy Mother's Day to you. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers out there. We love and appreciate you. And um, we hope your mom loves these cookies beautifully packaged. We really do. All right, you guys. We will see you back here next week. Be sure to subscribe for more quick and easy recipes. And we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>